All right, praise God. We apologize for not having uh, any sound here on the last part, but uh, oh, I guess we're getting back into shape here after all moving stuff around for the Christmas program. Anyway, praise the Lord. It's good to see each and every one of you today. Um, we were so thankful uh, for all of those who were able to come to the Christmas program. We had a lot of good comments um, this week, and uh, we thank God for all of that, um, that people are blessed out there because of what's happening here. So we, uh, we are just so thankful for all that God has done for us here. Praise God. My. Of course, we will have church tonight at uh, 6.30. We will have church again on Wednesday. There will be no ladies' Bible study this week on Tuesday. And uh, I'm sure they'll resume again after the first of the year. Also coming up, we have our New Year's Eve uh, service. That'll be on Monday, December 31st uh, at 8 o'clock. Uh, we encourage people to bring something to share. It's not a preaching service. It's just simply a time when we come and, and praise him, uh, sing songs, give testimonies of the goodness of God through the past year. And, of course, we have food and fellowship uh, that way, too, as well. So you're encouraged to uh, sign up on the back of the church. There should be a sheet back there. Uh, as to what you might want to bring for food to share if you're coming. And uh, that will help all of the ladies out. Praise God. So we don't all bring the same thing, right? We all bring a variety of things. So keep that in mind. Also next Sunday night will be our normal monthly missions offering. Uh, last Sunday of every month. And uh, that's happening next week. So... Just kind of keep that in mind. Praise God. We thank God for all he is doing. And uh, we give him praise for all of that. My. Just the end of the year is just kind of coming on us really suddenly, isn't it? And uh, praise God. We just uh, are so thankful for all that he's done for us here this past year. And uh, we're looking forward to the new year of what God has in store for us. Praise God. Well, we're happy to have Paula here this morning. Paula, come and share with us.
said to us, wrapped in flesh, his only son, his only son. And the heartbeat of heaven confounded our wisdom, but it's still the simple truth that sets me then you're a doer. <laughs> you can't be a believer without being a doer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. David, do you have some prayer requests this morning? I know he's here. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. This morning again we have several requests, several new, new uh, church families joining with us. This morning... <clears throat> Um, Dolores from Belgium said we are a church of 175 and we should have another 30 to 40 people. Please keep us in your prayers. Bonifico Hernandez says we are new. We will show the video this Sunday at 2 p.m. Please pray for those who will come. Hanasani from Bahrain says this is our first time coming to our church loves Jesus and we are not small but not large. Please remember our church for healings and miracles. Little John in Liberia says, please remember to pray for us as we really need your prayers. Salavansky from Poland says, we will have 322 coming for Sunday for both Sunday services. Our friends from Down Under says, we have 22 coming for the video tomorrow with two deaf, three who have RA, six MS, four cancer, and six with back problems. Caleb from South Africa says, we are a new little church of 78 and we have five coming just for miracles. And Samuel, our friend in the Fiji Islands, says we have 18 coming for miracles today. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> they just keep coming. Just keep coming. God keeps giving them their healings and their miracles. And salvation, oh, it's just so beautiful. God's doing so much. Glory. Hallelujah. You've got to make it. You've got to make it. And we're coming out of Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 35 through the fourth, 41. And then we're going to also do verse 1 out of chapter 5. But I'm going to interweave them like normal into the scripture. 
And I want you to think about it. Mark says, In the same day when the eve was come, he said unto them, Let's pass over unto the other side. Then if we look at chapter 5, verse 1, it says, And they came over to the other side of the sea. And I've got a word for somebody out there today. That's your word. You're going over. You're not going down. You're not going under. You're going over. That's a rhema word for you today. Whoever you are, wherever you are. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, Christmas, boy, it's upon us, isn't it? <clears throat> but we need to remember why Jesus was born. You know, sometimes we only remember part of it. That part is salvation. A great part. A great part. But he also came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. That's a word for somebody today. That's a word out there for you. Hallelujah. And you stream. You and all the other places. Google and Twitter and whatever else they call them. Hallelujah. That's a word to you. Maybe God told you he was going to save your children. Maybe he told you your ministry was going to another level. That it was going to be far better than it ever has been before in your life. Maybe he told you they were going to meet the husband or the wife you've been believing for. But you've got to listen to God. I know people that believe for husbands and a husband came right to this church. And they said, oh no, not him. And they're still believing. <laughs> Glory to God. You've got to believe God. And if you're believing God, God is the one that's going to bring it to pass. It's not you. It's God that brings it to pass. Maybe he told you we were going to bless and prosper you financially. That you're going to get out of debt. Maybe he told you he's going to heal you or deliver you or set you free. Maybe he said that. Then you've got a word from God. Do you ever realize that? You have got a word from God. He says his word will not go out and return void. That his word will do what it's been sent to do. But where's the breakdown? Either it's not time or you're not believing. It's got to be one of the two. I learned that many years ago. If it's not working, it's not God, it's me. If it's not working, it's not God, it's me. And I need to find out why. I need to find out what's stopping it. I need to find out these things. Glory. Because as I find them out, as I get a hold of his word, he can take me out of that and set me free. Glory. You've got a word from God. Why don't you tell your neighbor, I got a word from God. I've got a word from God. But your word is being challenged. Did you know that? Your word is being challenged. Anytime we get a word from God, that word is challenged. The devil has enough power to challenge that word, but he does not have enough power to stop it. He doesn't have enough power to hold you back. We hold ourselves back, but we can move into the fullness of everything that God has. Between our word manifesting, there's going to be a fight. It's either going to be a good fight, which we're supposed to fight, or we're going to back off because we don't like the fight. I watched some fighting yesterday. My son called and said, Hey, there's a fight on Channel 3, Dad. Glory. The guy that did win should have won within three rounds. He had the power. But he just didn't really get in there and do anything. He had all kind of excuses like we do. Well, that guy covered himself up so good I couldn't hit him. Uh, 
his manager kept telling him, get in there, let both hands go. Get in there. He almost lost the fight. I think he should have lost the fight personally when I watched it. Glory. Why? We didn't take the word. He didn't take the word from his manager. He didn't take the word that he had, and he didn't go after the victory. Are you hearing me today? Glory. I came to help somebody today. I came to tell them that the devil has enough power to challenge you, but he doesn't have enough power to stop you. You need to realize this. You, you need to stand on his word. You need to stand on his promises. Glory. Jesus said to them, let's go over. Let's go over. That was the divine word from Almighty God. Same words we get. There's nothing that can stop his presence. There's nothing that can make his presence different. He doesn't promise us something, and then don't do it. We've heard a lot on the television and stuff. Where was God in Connecticut? I'll tell you where he was. He was right there. He gathered every one of those little kids up in his arms, and he took them to heaven. Remember I said kids. I didn't say anything about the adults. Every one of those children was at the age of unaccountability. I don't even think they felt the shots or the pains or the suffering. I believe God took them. Just like that. Bay. It wasn't his will. That's not what he wanted to do. But he was there even though we've kicked him out of our schools. Even though we've kicked the word out of our schools. Even though we don't believe like God says, he's there. He's always there. And if we realize that, then we can walk in the victory. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He's there. He's there in your struggles. He's there in your fights. He's there in your problems. He's there. Why don't you just take a hold of his hand and walk to the victory? Moses said, I love this one. He said, God, if your presence doesn't go with me, I'm not going. And I've said that so many times. If God's presence isn't going with us, I'm not going. I don't want to enter into that. I don't, I've, I've made those mistakes when I was young and foolish. Glory. No more. Strength and honor are in his presence. Strength and honor are in his presence. Psalm 1611. In his presence is fullness of joy. You see Christians with long faces and you think, Oh man, he's always with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You say, well, you don't know what I'm going through. No, probably don't. But God does. And he's there. He's there to take it off. He's there to encourage you. He's there to lift you up. He's there to give you strength. He's there to heal you. I know a lot of people don't believe the Bible. They don't read it. Glory. Oh, I only read one book. No, you don't even read that book. Glory. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There are people who start out with some friend, and that friend deserts them. Do you ever have a friend desert you? I've had some do that. <laughs> you know, when things get bad or things look different or, or somebody tells them a lie, they're supposed to be your friend. And all the ones you look around and they're either gone or they become invisible. They're gone. They're gone. You're still there. You haven't gone anywhere. Why did they go? Glory. When you run out of money, you ever notice they had a lot of friends leave? <laughs> when you got no money, they're gone. Glory, they're not really friends. 
You know, we, we, we try to look at the world. You know, they're trying to solve all the problems that are going on. And they're looking at the worldly way to do it. They're not looking to God. They're not calling out to God. They're not asking God for an answer. And there's a good reason for that. As the head of your nation or your government, that's what the people are, even though we don't agree with him. That's the way God looks at it. He doesn't usurp the authority. We're the ones that usurp authority. God don't. God don't. Glory. But God's still there. He's still there to help. He's still there to strengthen. I've got one real friend. His name is Jesus. And he's always there. He's six closer than a brother. I've got other friends. Glory. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, before you had any position, before you had a beautiful home, before you had a new car, before you were all dressed up, he was there. Do you remember those days? Before you lived in the projects, when you were walking to work, riding the bus, you got your clothes from Goodwill. You ever been there? I'm the only one? Oh, thank you. Glory. God was still there. He was still there. He was trying to show me how to reverse things, how to change things, how to become the victor, how to become the head. I had to give away some suits, and I argued with him. I said, God, that's all I got. I go to church. You want me to go to Bible college now? I give them away. I got nothing. He said, you got me. Then he said, go to St. Francis, was it, honey? Glory. I think it was St. Francis. And they had lots of clothes. And I said, Lord, I've never in all my life taken second-handed stuff. We were a poor family. We didn't take second-handed stuff. Our parents made sure we had something. If we had to sew patches on them, we still wore them. And I had to buy one. And I thought, wow. Well, Man, those suits that I had, they were great suits, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, my aunt worked for a doctor. He bought a whole new wardrobe every year. And suddenly, he gave them all to her for me. And at one time, I had 21 suits, $500 or better, hanging in my closet. His shoes didn't fit me. I didn't wear a hat. But I found out that God was always there. I had to give in order for him to fulfill his word. I had to do what sounded ridiculous, impossible, in order to do what God wanted me to do. He promised us no matter what comes your way, I'm there. I'm there. He's there with us. Our scripture says there, there arose a great storm. Now, when you read scriptures, please take your time. You should have a concordance. If you don't, grab one. I, I bought two of them the other day because somebody said they were great. And then the Lord told me he's going to bless me through them, so I understand it better now. And we got them the other day, and it was, boy, it was thin. It was in notebook form. It's one of the oldest concordance out of the Greek. And I opened it up, and it was supposed to be a Greek-English concordance. Guess what? All Greek? I mean, it was all Greek. I looked, and I thought, wow, this isn't going to do me one bit of good. All Greek. But the Lord said, you remember that one you saw? And I only paid $30 for that one for $750. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. Because there's probably not too many of them out anywhere in the world. And I got one of them. God is always there. You know, we look for the problems. We look for the storms. We look for... All the bad things. I told you a joke many years ago. 
about a man that wanted to commit suicide. He jumped off the bridge, him and his friend. He talked to his friend and going with him. His friend said, surely there's got to be a better way out than this. So as they went down, they landed right in the back of a truck filled with horse manure. And the one friend says, oh, no, see, this, this, this is my life. No matter what I do, this is what happened. He looks, his friend is digging like mad. He says, what are you doing? He says, I'm looking for the horse. Where's the horse? Glory. You know, we look at the problems. Where's God? He's there. How's he going to take us through this? How, how is he going to bring us the victory? Right here it talks about a great storm. Now, when it says arose, it means it came up out of nowhere. Suddenly. I mean, everything was good. You know, they're enjoying their life. You know, you do that many times. We're having a great time and bang. Right in our face, some big problem. Some big problem. You're hearing the doctor's report saying, yeah, there's no help. There's nothing I can do. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's nothing that medical science can do for you. Lady called me Friday, I think, because it wasn't Saturday. It had to be Friday. And I was talking to her on the phone, and her husband one time, they had said he was going to die within three weeks with cancer. Glory to God. And I said, no, he's not. And I prayed for him, prayed for her. And his cancer level now in the blood is 12. 37 is normal. We all have 37 of whatever cells it is that has cancer in our life. It's there. But it's under control by our body. And at one time he was up over 3,000. And the doctors shake their head and say, we've never seen anybody come down this far. Oh yeah? Mine's point zero one. The doctor tried it, but it's point zero one. That's a lot lower than 21. Glory. You see, God's always present. He's always able. He's always willing. Glory. You know, you, you sit across from your wife and everything is perfect. Then out of the clear blue sky, she says, I want a divorce. Glory. You went to work on the job you've had for 5, 10, 20 years and thought you had job security, you had seniority, you know, you had, you had everything nice, a nice little retirement building up. But then they told you because of the economy we have today, they got to let you go. They got to downsize. And worst of all, all your benefits go with you. Dennis's brother had that happen. He bought a business, a gas station, a gas, and a restaurant together. And now because of our great Obamacare, they said his property is not worth what it was when he bought it. He hasn't missed a payment. He's making every single payment, and they take it away from him because he still owes more money on it than it's worth. Either that or pay it up. And he had stocks. How many? $140,000? And the stocks are no good. But God's still there. God's still there. It's not over for him. God is still there. I know I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. Whether it's you or somebody out there. I, I know. You've been injured here. You've been injured there. The enemy is attacked here. And the enemy is attacked there. And storms come up suddenly. Glory. But this here in the Bible, it was a real storm. Did you ever notice sometimes, and I bet you haven't, that looking at the stories of the victories they had, their problems were far greater than ours. Glory. And we complain about ours. 
instead of looking to God. Glory. This is a real storm. You know, if you're living in a place called Tornado Alley, you learn the difference between a common everyday type of storm and a supercell storm. I mean, we're just getting some of them up here in New York State now. But these are tiny. I, you know, I get kind of a chuckle out of them. One comes through here, it's not a half a mile wide even. It's probably not a hundred yards wide. Now, if you go out to the Midwest and you see some of those, you saw a storm. You saw a storm. You've seen whole cities, whole towns demolished. It, was, it wasn't a little pea-sized hail. This is softball or grapefruit-sized hail. The winds weren't 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. They were 100 plus. Glory. That, this is the type of storm that this is talking about. A storm came up. Glory. A powerful storm. The Bible says it was a great storm. Great storm. And judging by the circumstances in some people's life, you've got a great storm. It looks hopeless. The doctor says it's hopeless. The banker says it's hopeless. The lawyer says it's hopeless. The marriage counselor says it's hopeless. Your enemies say it's hopeless. And even your friends are starting to say it's hopeless. And sad to say, some Christians are saying it's hopeless. Well, I want to tell you, no, it isn't. It's not hopeless. It's not. I mean, if you got a word from God... It's not hopeless. That word will take you all the way through. Glory. There's an answer. And if you got that answer, you're going on to victory. You're going to be the overcomer. The Bible says their boat was now filled with water. Wow, how much more bad can it get? I mean, the boat now is filled with water. And the devil's saying, I want to destroy you. I'm going to drown you. Drown your debt. Drown your sickness. Drown your fears and despair. Drown you in depression and confusion. But I've got a word for you. It's not hopeless. You're unsinkable. Did you know that? You're unsinkable. Tell the devil, you can't drown me. I'm unsinkable. Everything around me may go down. But you can't drown me. Glory. I, I live like that. If you don't believe me, ask my granddaughter and her boyfriend. They went up to Syracuse to the hospital one time, and they ended up having seven different doctors arguing with me. Uh-uh. No, I'm going. Glory. They even put it on my report because my doctor here said, yeah, it says you un uncooperable. <laughs> Uncooperative, yeah. <laughs> I was. I had a word. Amen. I had a word from God. Amen. I'm not going to believe man. You see, when we start lining up and agreeing with the devil and believing the devil, that's when you got it. Or you can start believing God. Your word is your destiny. And that destiny from Almighty God makes you unsinkable unsinkable. The destiny, destiny in you is greater than the storm you're in. Far greater. Far greater. What do you do when you're in the middle of a storm? Anybody tell me? That's good. Do what? No, that's good. What are you praising him for though? What victory? I'm not picking on you. The answer, because you got the answer. You got a word. You don't praise God for the answer. You praise God because you know the answer. Glory. There's a big difference. Glory. When we know we've got a word from God, we're unsinkable. Yeah. We, we had that whole Bible study. You remember? I had that when we were out in Wisconsin 35 years ago with the same picture on it of these 
little beings. One of them's laughing his head off. He's ready to split his side. And the other one's pounding on the ground laughing so hard. And they say, the devil said what? <laughs> he said what? You see, we got a word from God. We got a word from God. Glory. So we go back to our word. You remember when they lost the head off the axe? And nothing went well? And they called the prophet. They said, what's wrong? He said, where'd you lose the head? You get that one. Where'd you lose your promise? Where did you lose what God said? Where did you lose your victory? And he made him go find the axe head. You remember that? He went back and he got the word from God. He went back and got the promise. And he won the victory. Oh, hallelujah. I'll tell you. Tell your neighbor, I've got a word. I've got a word. The disciples said, Peter, get back in the boat. You can't walk on water. Have you lost your mind? You remember? But Peter said, I got a word. Jesus said, come. I got a word. Glory. You feel unsinkable if your faith has been built up by the word of God. You know, the devil's been trying to push every one of us down since we've become a Christian. He's tried to hold us under the water, but our faith won't let him. Did you ever try to hold a, bo a, a bobber down when you're fishing? How many ever tried that? What happens when you let go? Boom! I mean, it not only comes up, it jumps right out of the water. You can take an old dry sponge, now get a hold of this, and push that down underneath the water. And what happens? Nothing. It bobs right back out. But if you squeeze it, work it a little bit, let it get the water the first time, and then wring it out, and drop it back in, it'll go right under. And it'll just suck up more water. You know, the water's the word. The water's the word of the Bible. Glory. Tell your neighbor, I've got a word. Got a word. Glory. You know, don't take the whole Bible. I mean, the devil has us so deceived, we think we've got to know the whole Bible. Or even a chapter. Or even a sentence. All we need is one word. One word. And if we stand on that one word, We'll have a victory every time. We'll be overcomers every time. A word will do for you what money can't do. A word will do for you what education, education can't do. A word will do for you what friends can't do. A word will open doors that were closed in your face. A word will cause things to turn in your favor. A word will hold you up when everything else is falling down. Glory. One word from God. What was their word? Go to the other side. Thank you. Go to the other side. Not drowned in the middle of the lake. Not be destroyed in the middle of the lake. Not give up in the middle of the lake. Go to the other side. Glory. Hallelujah. You know... God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? He will not. Will he not do it? Has he spoken it? Shall he not make it good? I mean, that's what the Bible says. Numbers 23, 19. I mean, who gave us the word? You know, we see people battling and struggling and fighting against the devil. But if they get that word from their head to their heart, they'll become the overcomer. Glory. I don't know how much garbage I had in my head before I got saved. 
I had a lot of garbage. Even from going to church, I had garbage. I like Charles Capps. He's got a whole teaching on how to kick the garbage can over or something like that. Kick it over! Get into God's Word. See what God has said. Think about it. it isn't it strange, even up there in Connecticut, when that disaster happened, they'd start saying, where was God? Well, they kicked him out of the school. They kicked him out of America. Will they learn? I hope so. Because the end is coming. That's why I didn't say any adults, because I don't know. I don't know their lives. I don't even be guessing. I don't know. I don't know if they've ever had Jesus Christ into their heart personally. I don't know if they know the word. You know, we've been lied to. Jerry and I was talking about that one day. He got saved by the beautiful book, Left Behind. Glory, and he didn't want to be lost, so I'm glad he got saved. And he said, what are we going to do for all those that are left behind? I said, there's nothing we can do for them. It's too late then. You know, this is why we push it sometimes. You know, it's all over. The Holy Ghost goes with us. It's the Holy Ghost that draws everybody in to get saved. I mean, if we read the Word, we don't get there by water baptism. We don't get there by all the foolish things that some people do. We've got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We've got to ask him personally. Not because some man told us to do, but because conviction fell on our heart. I remember when conviction fell on my heart. I do. I remember when me and my wife got out of our seats in the back row because we were back row setters. Glory, we weren't even saved. And we made our way to the altar with tears just streaming down our face. And there was a change. There was a change. I didn't do it because my dad had been there. I didn't do it because others were there. I didn't. Because the very morning that I left, and the pastor made sure he was at the door to shake my hand, he said, do you remember me? And I looked him eyeball to eyeball and almost nose to nose. I said, I've never seen you before in my life and pushed my way out the door. I knew who he was. I knew who he was. But I wasn't saved. But I'll tell you, when the Holy Ghost fell that night, there's nothing that could have kept us from that altar. Nothing. Because we knew. We knew. Glory. We had a word from God. You don't know how many words I had from God throughout my life before I changed. I mean, great men. Great men. Tent revival in Syracuse. Brother Shaw. William Brannan. A.A. A. Allen. I didn't surrender. I had many that would collar us. We were in the service when we were coming back from the bars and the nice little Baptist boys would always be out there trying to convert somebody. And I'd always laugh and tell them, hey, I'm going to hell. Why don't you guys come on along? I mean, we're going to have a beer party like that like you've never seen in all your life. Why don't you just come along? And they said, you're going to hell. I said, I, I know that. Come on with me. But it was the love of God. It wasn't the judgment. It wasn't the condemnation. It was the love of God that changed me. The love of God. You see, they had a word. Jesus said, let's go. Let's go to the other side. Let's go on and be the victors. If you're going to get the other side, there are some things you have to get over. Did you know that? Somebody lied on you. Get over it. Somebody cheated on you. Get over it. Somebody abused you mentally, emotionally, sexually, physically. 
and you hate them. You're holding unforgiveness in your heart towards that person or persons. Got to get over it. One time in Nebraska, I was holding a miracle crusade for tri-states, three states. <laughs> and there was a guy in a wheelchair on this end and a lady in a wheelchair. Yeah, the lady was on this end. And God said, pray for her first. And I went down and he said, but she can't get healed. I said, oh. He said, you've got to tell her that she's got unforgiveness in her heart. All right. So I told her. She says, but you don't understand. My husband ran off with her. I said, whoa, whoa. I said, God said, you've got to forgive him before he can heal you and walked away. I thought, Phew. I mean, 2,000 people watching me. I mean, a miracle crusade. Yeah? And everything was going great until that night. And I went down to the other guy at the other end. And God said, you tell him the same thing. <laughs> and so I told him. And he started the same thing. And I said, no. I said, if you want your miracle, if you want your healing, you've got to forgive him. Then I walked away and started praying for other people and doing other things when suddenly everybody went hysterical, screaming and howling, hollering and shouting and dancing. And here's the two people in a wheelchair up, walking, shouting, dancing. They had forgiven and God moved on their behalf. You see, unforgiveness. Well, stop God until we get out of our heart. Oh, hallelujah. Don't let what somebody else did to you destroy your destiny. It's not worth it. I heard a psychiatrist at one of our conventions in Chicago. He, he just, oh man, he nailed me right to the floor. Glory. You see, when I go, I want instruction. I want teaching. I want to get right. And he was talking about how you allow other people to affect your destiny. He said, you're probably one of those that before you ever get home, you get upset and you're boiling because you know without a doubt your wife, your wife has parked in your car spot. That was me. And I found out I had to deal with it. <laughs> Glory. Now she's never parked in my spot since I dealt with my problem. Just automatically. Huh? Glory. Wow. He said, are you one of those parents that when your kid spills the milk, you start yelling. You give them an hour-long lecture. How many times have you spilled it and you never said anything to yourself? I mean, this guy was skinning me. He wasn't having no mercy. And he didn't even know I was in the audience. The Holy Ghost was giving me a word by which to change. Wow. I know I'm talking to somebody that's got bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness. You're in the boat. <laughs> the Spirit's calling you. And the only way to get it out of the boat and get to the other side, you've got to deal with it. You've got to get it out of your life. You hold it in there, it's going to destroy you for all of your life. I seen that in Bible college. A young girl went forward and we had Dick Mills there and he was giving us all beautiful, flattering words. I mean, he's a real man of God. Don't get me wrong. He gave me the same scripture verses for the third time. He didn't know me. I knew this was God. And he says to that girl, he said, you got a problem. And I can't give you the words that God wants me to give to you yet. But you need to deal with that ice cream cone. And that was it. He went on the next person. We, we couldn't leave it lay. 
So when she come to class, we said, ice cream cone. What in the world was he talking about? And she told us how one day her grandmother and grandfather took his sister and didn't take him. And they went out for a car ride and bought her ice cream cone. And when, she come, when they come back, she said to them, where's mine? Like any kid would. And they just lit into her with everything they had, telling her how greedy she was, how unthankful she was, how stingy she was. That was in there. She had to forgive them in order to go forward. Or that always would be there. So the only way we get to the other side is to deal with these things. Are you willing to deal with them? This could almost be a two-part marriage uh, message. <laughs> Glory. It destroys your marriage. It, you know, we've got to the place in America, I don't know where you're at, I hope you're not there, that we think these companies that hire us owe us something. And I was raised up in a generation where we didn't take handouts. If I ever went on welfare and we were poor, I don't think my dad would ever, ever had stopped. I think he'd went and got a horse whip. I really do. And boy, I would have got the beating of my life because there was always some way, some way he told us that we could earn that money. I earned it by mowing lawns, peddling newspapers, working in an osher and a movie house, setting pins at the bowling alley. Glory. There was there was always a way. I was still going to school. There was always a way. And one time I was on a job and I've told you about this story. They wanted me to go out and clean out these two big tanks. Man, I don't know how much they held. And they gave me two pitchforks. One that had four prongs, the other had three. And I found out you did. The four was good, but you didn't want the four until you got down into the wet, loose stuff because it got too much and you couldn't really throw it in too good. The three was better. And I got upset and I got angry and I got mad. And I thought, this is ridiculous. There's nobody in all the world that can clean out one of these in eight hours, let alone two. It can't be done. And then I remember my father. He said, if anybody can do it, then you can do it. So I just dug in, dug in until they were all done. And I had to drive across the whole thing and dump it out there by the ocean on their property. I walked in the office and I looked at the foreman and I said, it's done. He had a puzzled look on his face. He said, what's done? I said, I've cleaned those two tanks out, took it over and dumped it where you said and washed the dump truck out and it's done. He said, you got to be kidding. I said, no. It's done. He said, and we hired two men and pay them eight hours overtime and it takes two days for them to get the two done. You know what happened the next day? Promotion time! Because he said we found somebody that really wants to work. And I had an easy job. All I had to do was turn valves and listen. <laughs> And if I didn't listen and pay attention, when the steam blew all this stuff through the line that went over where they made dog feed, you'd be cleaning the floor for the next half an hour to an hour because it'd blow it all over. But what an easy job. I had a word from God. I had a word from God that sent me there to get that job. He said, there's your job. When everybody was saying no, my dad said no. Spirit-filled Christian. I said, you see that truck? You know where that company is? He said, sure, I know where that is. I said, that's where my job is. He said, oh, no, they don't ever hire. 
That's one of the better jobs. They don't ever. I said, that's where my job is. No, no. I said, please, Ed. Just take me there. All right. I walked in the office, and I said, I'm looking for a job. And got hired just like that. Bang. Somebody had just quit ten minutes before that. Glory. God. I had a word. I believed what God. I still get in trouble. I get in trouble with my family. I get in trouble with a lot of people because I believe the word over anything else. I got a word. And I believe it. I'm not a doubter. He declared to them, go to the other side. Glory. Did they believe it? Glory. Not at first. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? How many remember her? Oh, yeah. I mean, she got a word from God. And she gets there. There's so many people there that nobody can get through the crowd. She's a woman. I, I used to preach that in Miracle Crusades all over. That's one of my favorite sermons. People don't look at it. There was a head of the Pharisees who could stone her to death standing right beside Jesus. She had a word. And she pressed her way through the crowd. She got up there and took a hold of his garment. And he didn't even know who she was. He said, who touched me? She had a word. And she got a miracle. Glory. We've got to know how to fight. The Bible says fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. Glory. One of the most powerful weapons that we have is our prophetic word. The word that God gives to us, our rhema word. If we make our confession, glory. The word doesn't do any good buried in the dresser drawer or just in the Bible. It doesn't do any, you've got to speak it, and you've got to speak it out loud. It doesn't do you any good in a binder with 150 other prophecies. You've got to put it to use. You've got to put it in your mouth, and the Bible says you've got to decree it. You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established under you. Job 22, 28. You've got to speak it out. I wanted to be on worldwide television, and every day I'd go down to my office in my prayer time, which was two and a half, three hours, and I'd confess, I'm on worldwide TV. They're hearing the word of God all over the world. They're doing it now through our Ustream. stream. And you know, somebody told a great man of God about me, Lester Summerall. He called me. He said, can you be here such and such a day? We want you on TV. I was on it three times. I had a word. And I stood on that word. Glory. Hallelujah. You shall decree a thing. And it shall be established unto you. You know what that word established means? Settled. Settled. God settled it. Glory. Hallelujah. But. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. I'm trying to hurry because, glory, I got three pages to go. <laughs> uh, just like Ezekiel in the Valley of the Dry Bones. You remember that? Ezekiel says, yeah, can these bones live? He didn't know. And God said what? Prophesy to them. Say a word to them. Speak the word. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm trying to close, like I said, but God just won't let me because this is critical for somebody, for somebody. Someone that's sick, you know. They're sick. They need the word. That's why you can't quit. That's why you can't give up. That's why you got to go to the other side. Who's out there is sick? I mean, your kids are watched. Did you realize and listen to that up in Connecticut? His mother had trained him. Train up a child in the way they shall go. He went that way. Sad to say. 
They probably weren't saved, but they were acting on the Word. The Word's still established. Glory. People say, well, I don't know why my son went astray. You taught him. Glory. He did. I've learned this the hard way. My son was always my oldest son, not David. He was, he was a good boy. <laughs> He was always in a fight. One time he beat up this bar, uh, body, uh, yeah, bouncer in a bar so bad in Iowa, they thought he had learned martial arts and all that stuff, and they were going to prosecute him. Oh, he was a mess. They sent us a picture. I thought, yeah, I trained him. I trained him. And I asked for his forgiveness. He's doing good today. He's doing good. But I had trained him. You asked David, I trained both of them. They didn't take anything from anybody because that's the way it was. One time they were playing ball and this kid next door threw the hard ball now, smacked him right on the nose, broke his nose. I had very, I loved him, don't get me wrong, but I had very little godly love, which is different. I heard him. I went over. He was crying. I took my hands. I put it on his nose. I straightened up his nose. And I said, now you stop crying and get back and play ball and went in the house. Where was the love and compassion? It wasn't there yet. It wasn't there yet. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to make it. My children are going to make it. My grandchildren are going to make it. My great-grandchildren are going to make it because I'm speaking the word over them continually. Yeah. Glory. I got a word. Hallelujah. Glory. You know, there's a lot of little boats out there right then. They were following. Somebody's following you. Somebody's watching you. I mean, Zane watches his dad. Listen to some things he says. I'm glad it's Zane. And I'm glad it's Randy. Glory. I hear some things that Gwen must say to her kids. I hear them. And I smile and think, wow, I like that. Maybe Kevin taught them. I don't know. Glory. They're watching us. If we fail, how many people did Jimmy Swagger take with him the first time he failed? How many did he take with him the second time he failed? Thousands and thousands and thousands. We've got to make it to the other side. We can't fail. We can't quit. I know the economy is bad. I know everything is, is bad. I know they're saying we're going over the cliff. Well, that's all right. God supplies all of our needs. Have you got that word? God supplies all of our needs. Glory. 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 Sometimes we have our pity parties. You ever have one? And I said, this is a strange birthday I just went by, Lord. I said, normally everybody's giving me five, ten, twenty dollars, you know. I said, I only had one card that had any money on it. But that was all right. I still love them. And then somebody else would come, give me a hundred dollar bill. Then somebody else came, give me a hundred dollar bill. Then somebody else came, give me a hundred dollar bill. I was looking for a five or a ten, you know. Because <laughs> I didn't expect them to have that much. But God said, I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. You better get your trust back on me. This whole world's going to fall apart. Who was waiting on the other side? Jesus. <laughs> no. That demon possessed man. The worst demon possessed man that Jesus ran into while he was here on earth. 
If Jesus hadn't gone, he'd have never got his deliverance. You've got to make it. Somebody's life depends on it. Your marriage depends on it. Your ministry depends on it. Your sanity depends on it. Your healing depends on it. Your miracle depends on it. I've seen people get some fantastic words. And some of them never got there yet. And I shake my head and wonder why. Yeah. What did the Lord bring in? Or what did the devil bring in? What kind of a storm? It must have been a mega one because they were so excited about it. I remember one night, and you probably don't remember this, but you should, what all kind of things were happening. The Spirit of God was moving right here and one of the most powerful services we had. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, prophetic word was going out. One whole family got some of the best words you ever heard in your life. You know what the devil did to get them to give up the word? Their father hung himself. And most of the family have never been back since. Except for a visit. Devil knew what to do. He knew what to do. Did that change their word? No. Did that mean they couldn't get it anymore? No. All they got to do is rekindle that word, stir that word back up, take that word, and they can go to the other side and they can get their miracles, they can get their healings, they can get their deliverances because they got a word from God. We've got a word from God. Glory. Hallelujah. i got to be to the end of this. Yes, I am. <coughs> you got to make it. Now, in closing, I want you to take somebody by the hand. Just hold their hand. Glory. Just put your hand on Zane. He's asleep, but that's all right. And now, for the next few minutes... For the next few minutes, I want you to prophesy to them. Now, in the word the way we're using prophecy, in other words, I want you to speak the word of God to them concerning their life, not yours. Their life. Their life. Tell them. Give them a word. Because I know God has placed within us a word. Tell them, I won't quit. I won't let you give up. I won't let you go. The Bible says we're in this together. We're going to make it together. Together. I know sometimes people get mad at me, but I'm still here for you. Glory. I know sometimes you think my word is hard. Somebody told me the other day, you know, I was telling that to them, and they looked at me and they said, Oh, Pastor, you're just a jellyfish. I said, yeah, you're right. You're right. I love them. Not the poison kind, not the bad kind. See, our minds can look the wrong way, but look the right way. The victors, the overcomers. I hear a lot of things in the spirit realm when I stand up here. <laughs> Father, we thank you that your word never goes out and returns void. We thank you that you have a word for them. They are going to be the victors. They are going to be the overcomers. Those that are, are coming by you stream are going to receive their miracles. They're going to receive their healings. The blind are going to see. The deaf are going to hear. The lame are going to walk. Cancer is going to flee. They're going to receive their miracles. The church is going to grow. Revival is going to come. Because God's got a word for you. If you want prayer for anything at all, I'm here.